Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I am Molly Gambhir. You must have come across this headline. Outgoing Finnish Prime Minister is filing for divorce. Sana Marin and husband Marcus Raikkonen were together for 19 years. They got married in 2020 when Marin was leading the country's pandemic response. After three years of marriage, the duo decided to call it quits. From the moment Marin was elected, she has been defying norms. She became the world's youngest premier and went on maternity leave while being in office. But that is not what today's story is about. This one is about marriage or the end of it. Marin has filed for divorce, not caring about the scandalous headlines that are going to follow, not even about the nasty tabloids nitpicking on her personal life. Once again, her partying videos will be circulated and overanalyzed, perhaps labeling her as a selfish woman who did not care about her family, maybe calling her someone who prioritized her career over her loved ones. But note this. Marin must have seen all of it coming and yet she went ahead with her decision. Why? To live life on her own terms. But the sad reality is not all women feel empowered enough. Not all of them can go ahead and take this life-changing decision. Even if it is something that they desperately need, divorce still remains a taboo. Single or divorced women in their 30s and 40s are still frowned upon. Many just prefer sticking it out in a bad marriage instead of walking away. And it's more common, by the way, in certain parts of the world. And I have data to support this. Women in India are least likely to walk out of their marriages. Indians, in fact, top the list when it comes to maintaining relationships with a divorce rate of merely 1%. Vietnam, where just 7% of the marriages end in divorce, is ranked second after India. 10% of the relationships in Tajikistan, 14% in Iran, and 17% in Mexico, Egypt, and South Africa end in divorce. Meanwhile, relationships break up more frequently in developed countries, the UK has a divorce rate of 41%, Australia at 43%, the US at 45%. So can we say that Indians are better when it comes to maintaining relationships? A majority of Indians, by the way, marry not for love, not when they have found a compatible partner to spend their life with, but due to societal pressure. In a 2018 survey of more than 160,000 households, 93% of married Indians said that theirs was an arranged marriage, just 3% had a love marriage, and another 2% described theirs as a love-come-arranged marriage. There has only been slight change over time. Marrying within your caste also remains an essential feature. As of 2020, around 64% of Hindus were against inter-caste marriages, and the figure remains at over 70% for Muslim Indians. Interfaith relationships are even rarer. So you see the prospects of finding the right match in India are already filtered by caste, religion, socio-economic class. You don't marry a person but their entire family. And culture also plays a huge role. We are, after all, talking about a country where the concept of soulmate extends to not one, but seven lives. Naturally, divorce has always been an uncomfortable subject. From early on, Indian women are taught to cater to others' needs before their own. Their husband, their children, their in-laws. Girls grow up watching their mothers become an epitome of sacrifice they are expected to imbibe that same persona. Many give up on their career, succumbing to pressure from their in-laws. And what happens then? A lot of women are left financially dependent on their husbands. Not to forget, they have children to look after because mothers are mostly the primary caregivers. And what about other countries? 
within Asia, Japan, China and South Korea have the highest divorce rates of 38, 44 and 46 percent. In fact, despite their conservative culture, China and South Korea still beat the UK and the US in divorce rates. So are Indians really better when it comes to marriage? Or are Indian women simply less empowered, more financially dependent on their husbands, and sold a toxic story from an early age to keep their marriage together, no matter what? Now take this into account. Nearly 30% of married Indian women have faced domestic or sexual violence. A staggering 30%. 3% of pregnant women have also met the same fate. And take this with a pinch of salt because it's just the reported cases. Many women don't even come out and report violence. Yet only 1% of Indian marriages end up in divorce and do consider that many of these breakups are initiated by men. And what does that show? How is such a low divorce rate justified? It comes at a high cost and Indian women seem to be paying for it, sometimes even through their lives. Between 2016 and 2020, an average of 20 Indians died daily by suicide over marriage-related problems. Of the total 37,600 marriage-related suicides, around 21,600 were committed by women. Only 2,600 were due to divorce. In India, the stigma around divorce is real and it's understandable. While courts and lawyers help with the legal procedures, there's hardly anything to help cope with the emotional aftermath. But women are slowly challenging that now. They are pushing for change. How so? Through social media support groups, stand-up comedy, spoken word poetry. Indian women are fighting the stigma around divorce. One post, one act, one verse at a time. There are now micro communities of divorced women on Instagram and Facebook. While you might not get help from your family, you might find some emotional release in these communities. It's true that a lot of women don't have the means to support themselves if they end their marriage. But if you are someone who can, and needs to end a dead marriage, let this be your reminder. Help exists and you deserve better.